Hi, we're Chris and Marianne from Tread the Globe and for the past five months we have been backpacking around Central America. Indeed, and one of the burning questions that we get all the time is what is in your rucksacks? Because obviously for five months, mm -hmm. how much stuff do you need? And the countries we've visited as well, we've had, we arrived in Costa Rica, we've done Panama, we've done Nicaragua, we've done El Salvador, Guatemala, and we dipped into a Honduras. Utila in Honduras. Yeah. And we've, yeah, we've done, obviously, we're filming for our YouTube channel whilst we're traveling, so we've got quite a lot of tech, which we'll touch yeah. on. But we thought we would do this video at the end of our trip rather than at the beginning when we left because then we'll show you what we actually used rather than what we thought we were going to use. Yes, two weeks into our trip we were still in Costa Rica and we chose <laughs> Costa Rica because we have a friend here and we were very lucky. We actually were able to decide and realise straight away we didn't need all We had stuff too we much had. stuff. <laughs> it was just too much. In fact, I actually said that I felt like a cart horse when we left. So two weeks in, I decided it was too much. Chris agreed. Yeah. And we actually we left. Packed. Yeah, we repacked and left a mahusive bag. We won't go through all the details of what we decided not to take with yeah. us, but we will show you the size of the bag. So this is what we travel with. We have a 65 litre rucksack each. Chris has a tech bag that he carries and I have a dry bag that we use as a day bag and carry the cameras and the tech that we just need for that day. So now it's time to empty our bags. We're gonna empty the big rucksacks and we're gonna lay everything out on the bed so you can see exactly what we have. questions obviously would be how many pants and undies do you have? Yes that's what's asked. So I have six pairs of pants, one flesh coloured and I have two bras and a pair of socks. And I have seven pairs plus the one I'm wearing which is eight. So I've got a total of seven t-shirts. I've got one with a collar um, in case we go anywhere a little bit smarter, and I've had to wear it a couple of occasions. I've got one that actually came with a pyjama set, which is really handy to keep one for sleeping in in hostels, if you're in mixed dorms, and things like that. And then most of the other ones, I've got four Tread the Globe t-shirts, and I got one free from when we went volcano boarding, plus the one I'm wearing. So I've actually got six tops that I use but I also have a couple of little vest tops, um, including one that I have with my pyjama set. So, as Chris said, when you're in hostels, you have to be covered up and decent. I've also got a couple of dresses. I've got my nice happy floaty dress. I've got another cool linen dress. I've got this dress that I use when I tend to go swimming or diving just to layer over and put over the top. It's only little, but it just does the job when you're sitting in a wet swimming costume or you're going out and about. Um, I also have a hoodie, which I love and use all the time when you're on Tigger buses or if you're on aeroplanes or if you're going out in the evening as an extra uh, layer. And then down below, I've got uh, two pairs of shorts shorts and then I've got one pair of three-quarter length black trousers and I've got my combats for trekking or if we go into cooler climates. So I've got a pair of shorts that I use for sleeping in, pyjama shorts, and I have two pairs of normal shorts, one here and one that I'm wearing. I also have a um, top, a bit more of a warm top, as Marion said. I haven't really worn it much. Um, I you tend to use it as a pillow, <laughs> as a pillow on the buses, or if it's really, really air conned on the buses, it can keep you a bit warm. And I have one pair of long trousers that I use for either traveling back home and I use for hiking. Chris and I both carry a uh, diving box where we have our dive computers and our dive masks. Um, we also carry our own pointers as well. 
So as keen scuba divers, we also have a dive against debris bag which we take with us on our dives or we also use to carry wet stuff if we've been swimming. Um, we also carry our own water shoes. Always really, really, really recommend these. You don't know when you're walking if you're going to walk or step on something like an urchin or a poisonous fish. Uh, we've been canyoning, we've been um, out kayaking in the sea and you just never know when it, you could end up needing non-slip shoes where you're not going to get yourself into a situation standing on sharp rocks or anything else. So we also have a rash guard each and we use these when we go swimming because the last thing you want when you're travelling is sunburn and these actually have um, sun protection inbuilt into them so when you're going snorkeling particularly if you're going snorkeling or you're out on a day trip these things are invaluable because the suntan lotion will just wash off anyway so we've got one of those each so as a woman i should be worrying about shoes so let me tell you about my shoe wardrobe i have my walking boots um, that obviously for any hiking trekking going off and you're never sure i always carry these and i travel in these as well it means less to carry in my backpack i also as i just mentioned earlier i've got my water shoes my batman water shoes they go everywhere with me i have my flip flops or as our australian friends call them thongs and i also have a pair of pumps that i have literally worn to death and I probably won't even bring them home because they died, they died. So footwear for me, I have a pair of my trusty sandals here. I live in these, they've lasted really well. I bought them for the trip, five months every day and they are still looking good and going strong. I had to buy a pair of flip flops because when we went um, diving, I normally wear dive socks to protect myself from rubbing from the fins and one day I forgot to take them. I ended up with some blisters on my toes and so by buying these they didn't rub and these have been really handy and I will use these back home in Trudy. And I have a pair of faithful hiking boots which you definitely need if you're planning to go up volcanoes or do jungle trekking etc. So good old comfortable hiking boots and with these you have to bring a couple of pairs of socks. So we've both got two pairs of socks each. These are the other two items that I would definitely, definitely repack in my bag anytime. We have a microfiber towel. We also have sleeping bag inserts and they're really super handy. Sometimes you never actually know where you're gonna end up sleeping. And once we ended up sleeping in a random house whilst we were waiting for a shuttle bus and we didn't really know whose bed it was and these were invaluable because we were able to snuggle on in, be nice and cosy. The other tip for these is you can use them when you're on an air conditioned vehicle, you can actually use them as a blown kit. So definitely, definitely consider taking one of these. They're not particularly heavy and they're nice and squishy so you can pack them in. So another definite must have item and we have used them, luckily not that often, is a poncho and especially rainy season is coming you can be out hiking you can be out and about in town the heaven suddenly opens and these they fold up really small they're cheap to buy and they're very lightweight but they keep you dry bug spray yep yeah, central america there's lots of mosquitoes and we bought the local stuff off uh, two different bottles the orange one uh, is the family one and the green one is a little bit stronger and mosquito coils and uh, recommend that you use this regularly when you're traveling. We also have a number of these padlocks. Originally, I had planned that they would lock up my tech bag, uh, but they don't actually go through the zip. However, in hostels, most hostels don't provide padlocks. These ones, little simple combination locks to lock your stuff when you're in hostels, especially in dorms and things like that. We also bought a number of these uh, wire chains, which are really, really handy. You can tie up your bag um, and padlock it to a post or to your bunk bed or something and it doesn't fit inside the locker. And uh, we've also, um, there was one time we had storage under the bed 
and to put both rucksacks in you wouldn't get the back one out so we actually used these looped them through and tied them to the rucksack and had a bit of a pulley system so these things are really really handy medical kit always always carry a medical kit there is nothing worse than suddenly having an accident or a problem and not having the basics whether it's wound dressings, whether it's Imodium in case you're poorly with the tummy and also make sure that you have some kind of pain relief. Check before you get on a flight or visit any country that there are no restrictions to the uh, medicines or tablets that you're taking but generally all the basic stuff you should carry. I actually fell over and cut my leg, fortunately I had a good comprehensive dressing pack and some micropore and I was actually able to fix it myself um, and not need um, to contact a clinic or a doctor. So it's really important to make sure that you have everything you need. Chris always laughs at me because in my medical kit I have micropore but I always have a tub of what we call in our family magic cream. It is pseudocreme and it's just so good to put on wounds, bites, burns, anything. Absolutely brilliant. So one of the first things we bought when we came over was coffee and powdered milk because everywhere we stayed we've been making our own coffee. It saves a fortune from buying it and you've got the convenience of making your own. And as coffee addicts, we definitely need this. Another thing that we have in our bag, which we carry with us, is a little fold-up shopping bag so that we don't have to use plastic bags when we go to the store. The handy baseball cap. If you're going bald like I am, it's definitely good for a bit of sun protection on the top of your head. This is our wash bag. We carry very basic wash stuff. We literally have Chris has a razor, um, we have some shampoo, a bit of soap, some tweezers, some nail clippers, um, just basic stuff, toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, if we need to add to that new toothpaste or shampoo or anything, we buy it on the road. You don't need to take loads of provisions, so that is everything that we need, hair, product, everything. Obviously, don't wear makeup, don't really do the hair thing, but that is everything that we have. I also have in my bag an electric beard trimmer because for five months, if I didn't shave, I would be looking like Santa Claus. Water bottles we carry everywhere with us. Most hostels have refillable water um, that you can use. And we also have a SteriPen, which I will show you when I do my tech bag, which can sterilize the water if you're unsure whether it is safe. I also have an electric toothbrush in the wash bag because I don't know whether you get that feeling, you know when you scrape your fingers down a chalkboard and you get covered in goosebumps? Well, if I clean or hear a brush sound or clean my teeth with a brush, that's exactly what happens to me. So I always use an electric toothbrush. So it's very handy, but in, in the backpacks, trying to access stuff, it's very handy being able to use individual bags that you can pull all your clothes out. So this is actually an old motorcycle helmet bag that came when I bought my last motorcycle helmet. And I use this for putting all my t-shirts and pants and socks in. So I could pull it all out of the bag from the rucksack in one go. Okay, so we're going to repack our bags and then we're gonna show you what's in the tech bag. Oh, and one other thing is I have a tripod. Um, obviously the camera was on the tripod while we were filming it, but this folds up quite small and goes in my large main backpack. Okay, so this is my tech bag. I chose this bag because it is the right size to fit in the overhead container as a passenger bag on most international airlines. Some of the cheap flights, probably not, you know, around the Europe like the EasyJet. But all the others, yes. So what is in my tech bag? Hard drive, essential to store all your film footage. Four terabyte hard drive, but over the past five months, we've only filmed just over one terabyte of data, just to give you an idea of size. Video mic microphone. We had to use this with the GoPro 6, but since we bought the GoPro 7, the audio has been so much better. So we haven't actually really used this too much and it attracts quite a lot of attention. GoPro um, underwater housing. 
If you're doing any scuba diving, although the GoPro is waterproof to 10 meters, this is perfect um, for going diving and some colored filters. You need like the different colored filters, red filters if you're going scuba diving. My handy camera, the FZ1000 Panasonic Lumix. This was actually the, our most favorite gadget that we bought. Um, it's a little adapter which fits all the plugs but also has lots of USB chargers. So that is a must if you're, if you're traveling. You can charge the camera batteries, the computer, you can charge everything all at the same time. I have another little bag of connections. So a little connection plugs into the computer so I can put micro USB cards in and um, a couple of the cables for the hard drive. I have a bar of chocolate for my mum and dad, bought from Utila. <laughs> Some spare SD cards, computer charger. And then in here I've got spare GoPro batteries. Um, I bought a spare cover for the GoPro housing, which Marianne's filming with now. Um, in the front we've got headphones. You have to have headphones, absolutely brilliant. Another thing we have used lots is our little iPad mini. Perfect, we've been watching Netflix. Um, I also did use it until I crashed my drone and lost my drone. I did use it for uh, flying the drone. And we've also got this super cool little adapter that Maria's sister bought us, which fits two headphones so we can both listen to the same program at the same time. That's really, really handy. Cables, GoPro charger, uh, charger for the camera batteries, and various other little cables, brackets, SteriPen for sterilizing the water, really good to save you having to buy water, little tripod which uh, fits the GoPro on. Um, also have, how cool is this? A little USB charger for my electric toothbrush. And a bag of GoPro attachments. So like a head mount, a chest mount, one for diving, a floating one. So that's been, that's been really handy. And last but not least, I have, this is where all the magic happens, <laughs> my MacBook Pro. Now it doesn't look like a normal MacBook Pro because it's in a, a hard case. Apparently it's drop proof, I haven't tested it, but it's an Urban Armour Gear hard case that um, looks very, very sturdy. So that's in the tech bag. So a lot of the stuff we carry, this actually weighs, it's quite, it's quite heavy. The hard drives and the computer weigh, weighs a lot. And that's what we've done all of our filming on. There are links below to our Amazon links if anybody wants to look at this or if you have any questions about what we're actually using in more detail, then drop us a comment below or send us a message.